This is CBS 46 News at 6, getting results. Breaking at 6, Governor Brian Kemp announcing he will declare Georgia's first ever public health emergency tomorrow morning. The move will help the state continue its fight against the coronavirus. And due to state law, the governor will call a special session of the General Assembly Monday morning at 8 a.m. to make this official. Also breaking at 6, President Trump declaring the coronavirus a national emergency. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Sean Gables. And I'm Tracy Hutchins. Well, that move clears the way for billions of dollars in aid for the United States to fight the epidemic. The action I am taking will open up access to up to $50 billion of very importantly, very important and a large amount of money for states and territories and localities in our shared fight against this disease. The president also announced a public-private partnership to increase coronavirus testing across the country. We've been in discussions with pharmacies and retailers to make drive-through tests available in the critical locations identified by public health professionals. The goal is for individuals to be able to drive up and be swabbed without having to leave your car. The decision comes on the same day the House works to approve a coronavirus relief bill. That measure includes money to provide free testing for anyone who needs a test, including people who don't have insurance. The relief from the president and Congress comes as the number of coronavirus patients across the country continues to climb. According to the Atlanta-based Centers for Disease Control, more than 1,600 people across the country have the virus, 41 people are dead. 46 states and the District of Columbia have reported coronavirus cases. 42 people in Georgia have tested positive for coronavirus with one death. Tonight, a bulldog investigation finding the number of hospital beds available in the state of Georgia may be woefully inadequate. This is compared to the number of hospitalizations we could see in a serious pandemic. Well, Chief Investigator Jonathan Carlson has that part of the story for us tonight. Jonathan? Guys, good evening to you. We learned officials have known this for years. Federal estimates of the health care impact of a flu epidemic, a flu pandemic, were made public at least five years ago. The Bulldog digging deep to find multiple state and federal pandemic plans dating back years. A state-by-state -state analysis of flu pandemic planning by the feds finding. In a moderate outbreak, 2.2 million Georgians would become ill. 24,500 would need hospitalization. In a severe outbreak, 2.2 million Georgians would become ill and 60,000 would need hospital treatment. Our reporting found there are only 22,344 hospital beds in the state of Georgia. Just yesterday, the state's health commissioner pressed on a temporary solution to keep folks out of the hospitals. Absolutely. We are actually working just right now to identify testing sites that are not associated with hospitals. Or she told us that could begin as soon as Monday. It will be staffed. Again, those pandemic plans, some dating back to 2005, are for the flu, not coronavirus, but it gives a glimpse into how stressed our health care system could be in a worst-case scenario. Finally tonight, we reached out to multiple local hospital systems to ask about their capacity plans. None were willing to give up information. Jonathan, thank you. An extended weekend for hundreds of thousands of Metro Atlanta students and educators begins soon. Multiple districts will be closed tomorrow due to the coronavirus. And while some educators are learning how they'll be able to teach students electronically, those same students are wondering where their next meal might come from. CBS 46's Ayana Crystal live tonight with an answer. Really, Ayana, a lot of parents need to know and hear. This is a stressful time for families, Sean. There are thousands of parents here that rely on these schools to provide a breakfast and lunch for their children. And now that they'll be out of school for at least two weeks, parents are scrambling and forced to choose between paying their bills or feeding their children. With numerous school districts closing in and around Metro Atlanta due to the coronavirus outbreak, parents are scrambling to figure out how they will make ends meet. Now I have three meals to cook for today versus one meal. Parents are now having to choose between paying their bills or feeding their kids. This is going to affect my pockets, my um, water bill, light bill, you know, everything. It's, 
is going to be a tremendous change. You know? Dakeitha Jackson is a mother of six with five growing boys. Hey, we only going to eat this, you know, because we don't know how far this thing is going to go. These mothers are relying on Hosea Helps to get them through this unforeseen situation. We all have our inventory because we just had a big event. The nonprofit food bank just gave over 4,000 families supplies of food for MLK Day. So now when families need them, they don't have the supplies. This is our season that we would normally rebuild our inventory to get ready for no summer hunger. This has hit us at the weakest time. Precautions by the school district with the coronavirus outbreak is making parents feel they have nowhere to turn. This has shocked the world and a lot of things that we didn't expect to go through, we're going through it, so it's, I don't know what to do. You're doing everything you're supposed to do as a parent and you will do anything to provide for your child. And it seems like the world is throwing things at you that you can't control, that's out of your control. Right now, school districts are working to ensure that no child goes hungry during this time. So there will be schools open providing meals. And for the list of those schools, log on to our website, cbs46.com. Now, Hosea Helps needs the community to come together and give donations to help these families during this trying time. For now, that's the latest in Atlanta. Ayanna Crystal, CBS 46 News. Ayanna, thank you. At least two Metro Atlanta districts are providing free food to students starting Monday at 10 a.m. Atlanta Public Schools will give students free bagged meals at five locations, Douglas High School, Cleveland Avenue Elementary School, Ralph J. Bunch Middle School, Sylvan Middle School and Phoenix Academy. Now, Gwinnett County Schools, the state's largest district, also plans on feeding its students while they're out of the classroom. Starting on Monday morning from 11 a.m. to 1 in the afternoon, 68 schools will be open to provide free lunch to anyone under the age of 18. That service will be available all next week. Food will also be available at school bus stops near those sites. Honestly, I think this coronavirus is gone way too far. And now you're canceling a race that is outside. I don't get it. Frustration coming from NASCAR fans who came to Georgia expecting to see a race. They are heated. It's an understatement. This weekend's race at Atlanta Motor Speedway in Hampton has been postponed. CBS 46's Bobeth Yates speaks with officials about their decision. I'm standing in the middle of the speedway track where drivers would have been doing their laps. But when news of the cancellation came down, those things quickly wrapped up. One by one, pit crews packed up to get on the road. They told us originally that we would be um, rescheduled for next year. And then they told us this morning it was going to be re rescheduled. The Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 was postponed. In a statement, NASCAR said they believe the decision is in the best interest of the fans, competitors, officials, and all associated with the sport. But many fans like Bridget Wainwright disagree. This is like my 17th year here on the outfield camping. Honestly, I think this coronavirus is gone way too far. Wayne White says she was OK with the plan to allow the race to go on without fans. But when they canceled it all together, she says things went too far. I could understand if you were closed in a building, but we're outside and she's not alone. We think it's over uh, an overreaction. Um, we really do. Everything is just just spiraling down. The shelves at the grocery stores are, are becoming bare. But there are some who disagree. It's got to be done. The less people getting together, the less spread, you know, so uh, I like that. I like that, and that's the way to do it. But fans don't have to leave. They're being allowed to camp out until Monday, and some, like the Wainwright family, plan to do so. We don't have to leave because we're on the outfield, so we're going to stay and we're going to party all weekend. Coronavirus is not going to take us down. <laughs> Officials say the race is just postponed, but they have not given a date of when the new race will take place. Fighting for our vets, Bo Beth Yates, CBS 46 News. I'm Glenn Marshall at the live desk. The world's busiest airport will be one of 13 airports used to divert passengers traveling to the U.S. from European countries affected by President Trump's new travel ban. The president's 30 day ban goes into effect at midnight. It prohibits travelers from 26 countries from entering the, the entering this country. American citizens, green card holders and a few other groups 
are exempt from the travel ban but will face additional health screenings and restrictions when they arrive. The countries impacted by the travel ban include Italy, where more than 15,000 people have the coronavirus. I'm live at the, uh, live, at the live desk, Glenn Marshall, CBS 46 News. Glenn, thank you. A quick recap on tonight's coronavirus coverage. President Trump has declared a national emergency. The move frees up tens of billions of dollars in aid. The president also announced that he will make uh, more likely take, he will plan to take a test. He says it's more than likely he will take it for the coronavirus over the weekend. Also, you may recall he was near Brazil's president who recently tested negative for coronavirus. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announcing he will go into self isolation for 14 days. Trudeau's wife recently tested positive for coronavirus. Earlier today, Canada's parliament voted to shut down for at least five weeks to help ensure lawmakers do not contribute to the spread of the new virus. Atlanta-based Delta Airlines announcing major cuts today. The airline said over the next few months, it would reduce its overall capacity by 40 percent. Those cuts include parking up to 300 of its airplanes. This marks the largest capacity in Delta's history, largest cut. The International Air Transport Association recently predicted that the coronavirus would deliver a $113 billion blow to the industry. Well, finally, the trading day on Wall Street ends, yeah, on the upside with a smile. Stocks rebounded today after Thursday's record-breaking drop. The Dow ended the day up more than 1,900 points. The S&P 500, the Nasdaq also ended the day in the green. You can download the CBS 46 streaming app or update it if you already have it so you can be the first to know about new coronavirus cases. You can also find stories on all the latest events canceled because of the virus. The app is free on Apple and Android devices. And if you are planning on being outside, you need to realize that the pollen count is high. Today, the level is 423, the tree pollen being the highest. And I expect that high level to continue tomorrow as well. It won't be until we get some rain on Sunday that we see the levels drop a little bit. So you get itchy eyes, a runny nose. It's probably pollen instead of the coronavirus. So be aware of that this weekend. Current temperatures, low 60s to the north, mid 70s. Athens is our warm spot today, sitting at 76 degrees, 68 here in the city. There's just some very light rain down to the south of the city in Troop County, Meriwether County as well. This will be the story through the evening, maybe a brief shower, but overall cloudy and dry with only a slight chance for rain really tomorrow morning in the northernmost counties. That's where the rain is really going to be focused, not only through the weekend, but through the next seven days. Overnight tonight, very mild. Temperatures will bottom out in the low to upper 50s, only slightly cooler than it was this morning. Looking at your day as a whole tomorrow, not too bad. The same pattern that we've been in. Not much rain expected. Temperatures will be mild topping out in the low 70s across most areas and staying very mild through the evening. Overall, pretty cloudy, but we could get a few peaks of sunshine tomorrow, definitely. And again, it's just areas north of really Gainesville and Rome up towards Chattanooga that could see a few isolated showers. Atlanta and Metro and areas south should remain dry through the day tomorrow. Here's a look at the weekend. You can see all that rain tomorrow well up to our north. It will begin to sink into our area on Sunday and it will reach Atlanta and Metro and North Georgia Sunday morning through midday. Not a complete washout again, but scattered showers are likely through the day and that will hold temperatures down just slightly into the upper 60s. So the better day of the two to get out will be on Saturday. Looking ahead to next week, not only here, but pretty much the entire continental U.S. will be in a unseasonably wet pattern. But the focus of the rain is actually going to be off to our west in the Mississippi Valley region. We're still going to be right on the fringe of that rainfall. So through the week, really through the next seven days, you can see the bullseye for the most rain is out in Oklahoma and Arkansas. But here in Georgia, we could pick up anywhere between one to even three inches. The orange you see is two inches of rain, so it could be a pretty wet week next week, even wetter than it was this week. Looking at the seven day forecast, Atlanta's most accurate forecast calls for a pretty cool day on Monday as a wedge is in place. Then we jump right back up into the 70s by the middle part of next week.